Okay, gather around. First of all, I want to thank everybody here for your attendance today. It shows you care. That you care about our veterans, you care about what William here is doing to raise awareness. Uh, camp is very proud to honor William here uh, today for his efforts to bring greater awareness to the plight of homeless veterans and for veterans in general. When I heard about William's plan to walk coast to coast on Fox News, I went up on his website and when I saw that his walking route was coming right through Little Valley, New York, it was a no-brainer. We got to stop and we got to honor this man and, and, you know, give him, you know, just give him Godspeed on his way to Vandenberg Air Force Base in Southern California. William, how many, how many miles do you have under your feet this time? Five hundred and twenty miles so far. That is awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, when I heard William was coming through Little Valley, I thought, you know, this is a marriage made in heaven. Yeah. William's here for veterans, we're here for veterans. And I knew that we had to show him that we understand his concern for veterans, and that here at camp, we support William's mission 100%, and, uh, 100%, and, uh, all the camp members agreed wholeheartedly we need to stop and have a small ceremony for this guy along his way now you may most of you can see the sign over here and you know what this building is all about it, it was dedicated to over uh, almost 3500 civil war veterans on september 7 1914. around 200 uh, surviving civil war veterans stood pretty much where some of you are standing right now in fact Take a look at our banner over here to my left, and you'll see those veterans standing right there. They, when they were interviewed, most of them were interviewed by newspapers, etc. On that day, they all had one thing to say. Please, don't forget what we did there. They did not want their efforts, their suffering, their valor, their courage to be forgotten. And that is why camp is here. We don't want that to be forgotten. The veterans that William is walking for are basically saying the same thing today. Please, don't forget us. You know, we, we send these people off to war. And we, we, send, we send them off happy and whole. They don't return that way most of them. They're injured, they suffer, they're vexed by PTSD, they're angry, they're sad. They served us. And in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of your opinion, it's time for us to serve them. We all, and we want to make sure that we make them as whole as we possibly can. And that's what William's trying to do here. He wants to make everybody aware of that. So, when this building is restored, and rededicated, camp has decided that on that rededication day, when we see that, that gleaming dome back up on this building, we're going to dedicate this to all veterans. We're not going to forget our Civil War veterans. We promised them on that day that this building would stand in perpetuity for as long as it was able to stand, and that is our aim, and that's what we want to do. We would like to see this complex, including the Board of Elections, the old Board of Elections building, to become a veteran center. And hopefully this is the very first of the events that we will hold here for a long, long time. I want to remind you again that we've got to take care of these vets. We have to remember our vets. We're talking about veterans from the American Revolution on forward. Not just Civil War, not just Iraq, not Afghanistan, not Korea, not Vietnam. All of them. They're very important people. Very important people. I also want to remind you that sometimes we don't agree with the wars that we send our servicemen and women off to. We don't have to agree with it. 
but we don't have to blame them, and that has happened in the past. These soldiers, when they're given an order, an officer says, jump, their only response should be, how high, sir? That's what they do. They follow orders. They don't make policy. They go where we send them. And for that, we owe them for their service. So, you know, if we leave, we want to leave those. We want to leave those disagreements on the doorstep of other people, the policy makers, the decision makers, our president, our vice president, our Congress, uh, the Senate, the Pentagon, those people, those are the people that you might have, uh, you know, disagreement with, but not the enlisted man, that's for sure. They do what they're told. So I want to thank you again for your service. Uh, Steve McCord, would you come up? Steve McCord is the Cattaraugus County uh, <coughs> Service Director, and I want him to say a few words. It is very important, as you just heard, that we do not forget our veterans. Uh, I spoke on Memorial Day in South Day, and my speech was about a conversation I had heard in only an earlier, the week prior. And it went something like this. I was standing in line at Wendy's restaurant. Behind me, I heard someone say, hey, Monday is Memorial Day. And the response was, yes, what is Memorial Day about? And the first person responded back, I don't know, I think it has something to do with veterans or people in the military service. I turned around, I was expecting to see high schoolers or such like that. What I saw were two women that were in their 30s or 40s. And that is criminal. We have a moral obligation to teach our younger generations what it means to be a veteran, what it means to protect this country and on Memorial Day, why we honor those who gave their life for this country. And those that are lucky enough to get through a combat and get back here, none of them are whole. You're not the same person you were when, when you went over. And, and there, there, this just can't happen. So, you run into two groups of veterans that seem to be forgotten. One of them is the homeless veterans. And don't kid yourself, you, you hear on the news up in Buffalo that they declare Buffalo, Erie County, uh, homeless free. Not true. Cattaraugus County is not homeless free. Uh, once a year, they, they do a point, point in time survey of homelessness. At that time, there's an average of the seven years I've been the service officer of 37 homeless people. And of those homeless uh, folks, there's always homeless veterans. So we cannot forget them. The other group are the, the veterans that are suffering so bad that they commit suicide. We cannot forget them either. Uh, but we're here to honor William, taking on an endeavor such as this. He proves that as a group, veterans are an amazing group. We have the American Legion and the VFW that stands in Washington and fights for our veterans' rights. Because let's face it, the politicians aren't veterans. They're not driven by veterans' interest. They're driven by the lobby groups and such like that. We need the VFW. We need the American Legion, the AMVETS, and all the other service organizations. We have such an amazing veteran right here walking across the country to raise awareness of veterans' homelessness. And it's not just to come here and look at, honor him for doing it, which we do want to honor him, but it is to raise money for homeless veterans. Go to his website and donate to the GoFundMe cause. That's why we're here. We have homeless veterans here in Cattaraugus County. We, we have veterans that are suffering so bad that they want to commit suicide. It's folks like us, folks like the American Legion and VFW that are here to help them. And, and we have to make sure that not only the veterans are aware of it, but the entire population and the politicians are aware of it and don't just push it to the background. We need to do it here. William, thank you for doing this. I am humbled for being here with you. Thank you. Thank you.
have a couple of representatives here from the Veterans of Foreign War. Danny or Joel, do you want to say anything? Come on up, Danny. Danny Williams. Well, uh, I, I'm very honored to be here with this cause. That's one of our causes with the uh, uh, Cattaraugus Allegheny County Council as homeless veterans. And we gave away to homeless veterans in the last, I think it's around 20 years of its existence, our program close to uh, a quarter of a million dollars <coughs> to go to homeless veterans. And uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, this year alone, we gave away many thousands of dollars to the homeless veterans cause at the Buffalo VA. This guy right here, proud of a technically a very good cause to walk across the country. I wish I could walk, but no, I go with him. That's so kind. <laughs> so would I. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dan. Okay, then without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, and I'm going to give him a moniker today, Walking William Shuttleworth. <laughs> Thank you, folks. When I think about tearing this building down, can you imagine what would happen if Washington needed more parking space and wanted to bulldoze the Vietnam Wall? Imagine that. Maybe in a hundred years they think they could get away with it. A lost legacy. We can't let that happen here. We can't let that happen for anybody. I, I got this idea about walking across the American for veterans last year when I had the privilege of being a camp host at a state park in California for seven months. And I created five spots for veterans and or for homeless people and they all turned out to be homeless. And uh, They would sit at my picnic table every night and I would listen to their stories. And the stories were very similar in theme. Uh, they came back from war, they were forgotten, they were injured, they entered a VA hospital temporarily, they got put on op opioids and other medications. Soon after that, they were discharged to the streets without any hope, without any job training, and they fell apart, and people blamed them. And uh, as Steve said, uh, 50 veterans every day in this country kill themselves. That's tragic, isn't it? We can do something about that. One out of four people that you see in the streets that are homeless in the cities are veterans. So I wanted to focus on not only homeless, I wanted to focus on better medical care. I wanted to focus on better pay for enlisted men. If you enlisted in the Army today, uh, you would qualify for food stamps. Isn't that a great recognition for the service that you commit yourself to? I want to, re I want to, I, I want to uh, support better job training. I want to support the families. We forget that every veteran has a family that oftentimes suffers greatly as, as a response of, of the service that they, that they have. So when I came home, I, I told my wife, Patty, uh, that instead of walking 20 miles in town every day, I might as well walk in a straight line across the country and build a coalition of people coast to coast, grassroots, ordinary people that are fed up with Congress that can make a difference and elect people that have strong belief systems and won't forget a veteran. And I have to tell you, in the 510 miles that I have walked, I have li literally met hundreds and hundreds of people that need this support. They are reaching out to be heard. I've had great touching stories. I saw this man that lost both of his legs in a little garage. He works in a little garage in outside of, of, of North Adams, Massachusetts. He runs his entire garage himself with a scooter. Never did, never one time collected a day of unemployment. And about an hour later, uh, he caught up with me on the road and uh, said, you know, he says, I, I feel like you're walking for me. It's, 
just an amazing story. Uh, I met a man who lost his father in Vietnam when he was seven years old, so he didn't really know his dad. And he says, I'm, I'm watching you every day. Like, he says, so like watch, watching my dad. And I'm, I'm thinking you're, you're my dad. So these are great stories. Um, I, I have created a GoFundMe page. Every dollar that I, I gather from, from that will go to disabled veterans for job training, for drug training, for drug treatment. Uh, none of the money goes to me. Uh, I'm self-funding my own trip with my Social Security check, as large as it is, as you know. <laughs> uh, people have been very kind to me and taking care of me. Uh, when I was in Castile, New York, I slept in the church one night. and I did confess to the minister it wasn't the first time I would have slept in church before. <laughs> so, <laughs> last night we had a nice gathering in uh, arcade, veterans, and that was lovely. Uh, dinner and all that, beautiful. Uh, one of the things I notice, though, when I go to VFW and, uh, and the American Legions is that I'm one of the youngest guys in there. And I'm afraid that if we don't recruit younger veterans and their families to join these military groups, they will lose their power and their focus. We need to reach out to the guys coming back and the girls coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan and, and support them to join. Because if they do not have this advocacy group, they will lose, they will lose their voice. As Steve mentioned, uh, when I went into the service in 1970, about 80% of Congress were veterans, 80%. Today, about 6% are veterans. And with all the circus going on in Washington right now, but the fact that uh, only 6% of veterans is not on their radar screen. So who is going to make those, okay? If you're not a vet running, at least make sure that when young people are running for office, that they really understand what it is that our veterans need. So uh, I'm about 510, 520 miles. I started on May 15th. I took two days off to visit my sister in Canadegua. Uh, so actually I've been walking about 15 days. I've been averaging about 30 miles a day. I probably won't keep that pace up when the Kansas heat hits me. But I've been taking advantage of the cool days and the long days, and the long, how long that each day is now. And I've enjoyed every day walking and meeting people. One more thing I'd like to say is that if Congress could harness the wisdom that exists in the average diner in America, <laughs> Our problems would be resolved. I mean that. I have had coffee and pancakes and eggs and toast at dozens of diners across this great uh, state, these states that I've been traveling through. And they are ordinary people. They work hard. They have strong values and strong feelings about this country. I don't know why we're not listening to them. And when I asked them, why aren't you, why aren't you letting your voice be heard? They said, well, nobody wants to listen to us. Don't let that happen to you. You pay taxes, you're an American, let your voice be heard. Uh, make, it, make, it, make it loud and clear. I think one of the most powerful things you can do is, is make, walk, walk, walk right into your state legislature's office. I saw a guy in, in Waterloo, do you know what Waterloo is? It's actually the home of Memorial Day. Did you know that? Memorial Day originated in Waterloo. He was my age, and he had his discharge paper, which he showed me, DD-214. You guys know what that is. The little box down at the bottom that should have been with a little X in that he had an honorable discharge. The secretary never put an X in there. He has spent all these years being denied services because that X was not in there. And he has had all kinds of red tape, the rigmarole, the third degree. And I said, let's find your state legislature. And so uh, he happened to be in the parade that day. We found him. He wants to be reelected. <laughs> you have power. You have power. So thank you uh, very much for this occasion. I'm totally delighted to be here. I can't wait to meet more of you people and uh, celebrate this day. And uh, uh, gosh, I can't believe I'm almost through New York. I'll be into Pennsylvania in two days. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> so,
Well, thank you very much for hosting me today. You have to be careful. It's a mess down there. I also forgot to point out, Austin Spencer is with us, and I'd like to have him come up and say a few words. Austin, thank you for coming out. Shows that you care. If you're elected, don't forget about us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Austin Morgan. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's his brother. <laughs> um, my name is Austin Morgan, and I hope to be your next state senator uh, after Kathy resigned earlier this year. Um, let me just say it is an honor to be standing on this ground uh, with you, sir, today. Thank you for coming to Little Valley, to coming to New York, and spreading the message that you are. Um, I come from the generation where we have not lived a day of our lives without war. Um, since the day I was born, the war in the Middle East has been raging. And uh, my, my uh, father-in-law is a Desert Storm veteran, and seeing how invisible he feels, how, uh, how neglected the, the veterans from the Middle East are today is just heartbreaking. Um, the, the school buses going by, as, as William was speaking, I wish they would have just stopped and let all the kids off and had them listen, because that's exactly what we need. Um, you know, I come from Freedom, New York, which is a lot like Little Valley. <laughs> uh, politicians don't come there. Uh, we're not listened to. We're not heard. Um, but I hope to change that. I, I really do. Um, because because what you said, William, I, you know, I go to diners a lot, and I, I love just listening. That's, that's the most important thing you can do for someone, is just to listen to their experience, to hear their story, um, and take the value from it that you can. And so um, that's what I'd like to bring to Albany. I'd like to bring your stories and your voices, not just mine, because you're the people who count, making your lives better, giving you the services that you need. Um, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so, again, uh, I heard a lot of the same talk around Memorial Day. What's this about? Can't we just have a barbecue? Things like that. And it just is, you know, you ball up your fists and you, you go get through it. But, um, yeah, I mean, my generation really needs to hear these stories. They need to hear these kind of messages. And to see someone like me in Albany, to see someone from our area making changes for the better in Albany, I think well for our state and for our country. So that's what I hope to do. Thank you again, William. Thank you all for coming out today. And, and again, it's it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. That pretty much concludes our welcoming ceremony. Uh, in closing, William Camp wishes you Godspeed on your way, and may he protect you and make it so that I'm going to be standing there at Vandenberg Air Force Base when you make it. All right? Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming.